Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima allimtana wa zidna ilma subhanak Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma allimtana innaka anta al-alimul hakim. Wa ba'd, respected brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. The full response. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. We praise and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, it's a great honor and privilege to be here in this city or town, Oldham Sharif. People call Leicester Sharif, but I always get mixed up with Oldham and Rochdale. I think a few years ago I had a lecture somewhere here in Oldham and I mentioned in the talk that this Rochdale and Oldham looks like Mecca and Medina. They're just two close towns. I don't know where they are. Somewhere around Manchester. We only know Manchester, really. But this... First I thought the program was in Manchester. Then today when we were coming here I actually realized that it's in another place called Oldham. But alhamdulillah, great to be here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of you for taking out your precious time on this very sunny, sorry, rainy summer. Alhamdulillah. It's a ni'mah. We were supposed to have some, our friends who come from America, mashallah, they must be thinking, this is amazing summer, alhamdulillah. We, we had a, what we call, we're not doing qada, we had a summer in June already, alhamdulillah. And maybe in a few weeks' time it will return, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, I would like to thank Miftah Institute. I really like this, you know the way they've done Miftah, the ha and the T together. Dual, multifunctional, Miftah. I was just telling my son here, I said, can you see this? It's Miftah Institute, mashallah. Uh, may Allah reward Sheikh Abdul Wahab and Sheikh Abdullah Wahid and the rest of the brothers. I've worked with them previously. This is actually the first time we've met in person, even though I've traveled to America many times, Detroit and Michigan and Chicago, but this is the first time we've met, even though we've spoken a lot and I've done a, quite a few programs for them online. Alhamdulillah, it's a great honor and always a privilege to be working with them and being able to teach uh, online courses, etc. Today's topic, of the topic of today's session, which is related to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which um, gathers all of us, unites all of us, anchored by the Qur'an. And the Qur'an is something that unites all the Muslims, regardless of whichever methodology or background or ethnicity or understanding we have. The Qur'an is something that unites everybody. And this is why Allah said in the Qur'an, وَاَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold on, all of you, collectively, to the rope of, rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this Hablullah, the commentators have explained, it refers to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an. Now this Qur'an that Allah has given to us, and I'm just going to talk very briefly, three basic rights of the Qur'an. The Qur'an has three basic rights over us, every single one of us, male, female, Muslim, you know, all the Muslims, uh, elderly, the young. Three basic rights, hukuk, of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the first right of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and these rights have been, you know, taken from the Qur'an itself, but the first right is the recitation of the Qur'an. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in about four or five places in the Qur'an, he talks about the basic objectives, what we say maqasid, maqsadun nubuwa, the objectives, the basic um, objectives or the aims and the goals and the purposes, the reasons, the motives, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Why did Allah send the prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam? What was the reason for his descent? Why did Allah appoint a prophet? And Allah mentions this in about five places in the Quran. One of the places he says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Indeed, Allah has favored the believers. إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا Because he sent amongst them a messenger. مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ Who was from amongst them. Number one, why? يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ He recites, he teaches them how to recite the book. He teaches them how to recite the book. The words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yatlu, tilawa. So one objective, one job description, one objective of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was tilawa, teaching tilawa. Yatlu alayhim. Teaches people how to recite the book. Then he said, 
يَتْلُوْ عَلِهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ And he purifies them. That's his second job objective. Spiritually purifies them. وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابِ And then he teaches them the meanings of the book. First was the way to recite. And then purification. Then number three, he teaches them the meanings of the book. And number four, وَالْحِكْمَةِ He teaches them wisdom. Four basic objectives of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, leave the two from there. Not because they're not important, they're very important, but that's a topic on its own. Two of the objectives mentioned in this verse, what were the four again? Let's see if you're awake. What was the four again? Number one, recitation teaches them how to recite. Number two, spiritually purifies them. Number three, teaching them the meaning of the, of the book. And number four, teaches them hikmah, wisdom. Let's leave the hikmah, wisdom, and that's a topic on its own and the spiritual purification, teaches them the book is one separate objective, and the meanings of the book is a separate, distinct objective of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa What does that tell us? That number one objective is, was of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa was that he came into this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him, he taught his companions, the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, wa anhunna, the male and female companions. He taught them how to recite, recite tilawa, how to recite the book. This tells us that recitation of the book of Allah in itself is an objective for every believer, regardless of whether we Understand the meaning or not. Understanding the meaning is the second uh, objective that I'm coming to. Tilawa in itself is an objective. Even if someone does not understand the words of Allah, this is kalamullah. Remember, you know, we hear the Quran always. Think for a moment, brothers and sisters. This is kalamullah. You know what that means? It's an attribute of Allah. This is one of the manifestations, one of the things we can see direct of Allah. We can't see Allah in this life. لا تدركه الأبصار وهو يدرك الأبصار. We can't see Allah in the Akhirah. Inshallah, we we shall see Allah in Jannah. But in the, in this life, we see manifestations of Allah's creation and His bounties and His gifts. But something really closely attached to Allah. You know, this is a discussion that these are not the words of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself. These are words of Allah. Just imagine, kalamu Allah. Imagine, words of Allah, these are no, you know, nothing ordinary, this is, this is extra, extra, super, super extraordinary. So tilawa, reciting the Qur'an in itself is an act of worship, it's an act of ibadah, and therefore every Muslim should make it a part of his or her life. Our teachers tell us that no Muslim's day should begin before doing anything in the world. You cannot start your day without reciting the book of Allah. A Muslim can't live a life where their day does not commence, begin, initiate, start without the recitation of the book of Allah. Inna Qur'an al-Fajri kana mashhuda. Quran in the morning time is attended by angels. But you can read it any time. But it's really good to recite it in the morning. But the point is daily recitation. Whether you recite 10 pages, 5 pages, even if it's one page. Recitation of the book of Allah. Words of Allah. Tilawa. In itself is an act of ibadah. Even if someone doesn't understand the meaning. You know some people say this. That, Look, you know, what's the point in reciting if you don't get the meaning? That's a separate objective, brother, sister. Even if you don't understand, you still, it's an ibadah. Quran is not like any, you know, any other book. If there's any other book, number one, if you don't understand, you will never read it. Anyone know Chinese here? There might be somebody. Nobody? Nobody knows Chinese here? Ching chong ching, no, ching chong, no? Nobody knows. It's a good language. Okay. Imagine picking up a book in Chinese. You know how to read, but you don't, you don't have a clue what it says. Will you read it? Will you ever read it? 
No. Even if you understand the meaning, Harry Potter book, Roald Dahl book. Who else is the author? Abdullah. Roald Dahl, who else is an author? You read it three times, four times. You say sometimes to me, I've read this book, I've read it twice, I don't want to read it again. It's boring. Once you read it, khalas. Quran, even ask the scholars and the students of knowledge, even if you've read it two billion times, every time you read it or you listen to it, it just, regardless how many times you've read it and you know the meaning, still each time it just gives you this special spiritual lift and it's amazing. And you don't have to have a super amazing voice for it as well. You know, those people who are attached to the words of Allah, they don't need... I mean, of course, good voice it helps, but it's not a necessary requirement for them to feel uplifted by the words of Allah in itself. Even if you don't understand the meaning, there is reward. You know the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? He said, each word you recite, each word you shall get ten rewards. And then he said, when you recite Alif Lam Mim, you gain how many rewards? He said 30. I don't, I don't say, he says, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he says, I don't say you get 10 rewards for Alif Lam Mim. Rather, Alifun Harfun, Wa Lamun Harfun, Wa Mimun Harfun. What did he say? Alifun Harfun, Wa Lamun Harfun, Wa Mimun Harfun. Alif is a letter, 10 rewards. Lam is a letter, 10 rewards. Meme is a letter, 10 rewards. Just by saying Alif, Lam, Meme, 30 rewards. And you know the significant point here? I haven't read this in any book, but this came to my mind. Allahu Alam, if it's good, if it's good, it's from Allah. If it's not good, then it's from me. And then just disregard it. But imagine... Look at the example used by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He could have said any other word from the Quran, like for example, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ After Alif Lamim is what? ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ Right? He, would have, he could have said, I don't say ذَلِكَ is one word, rather ذَا is one letter, and Lam. The example he used was Alif Lam Mim. Alif Lam has no meaning. ذَلِكَ has a meaning. All these letters, Hamim, Yasin, Saad, Qaf, these are letters. Allahu a'lamu bi muradihi bi Only Allah knows the meaning. There is no meaning. So the example he used to say that you will get reward is of a word of the Quran that has no meaning that we know. Allah knows the meaning. This tells us that without any meaning you get reward reciting the book of Allah. Just imagine. He could have used, he could have said, okay, wanazi'at. You receive, you know, 50 rewards. No, he said, Alif, Lam, Mim. No, no meaning understood. Therefore, brothers and sisters, don't let anyone ever say to you that what's the point in just, you know, puppet fashion, parrot fashion, just, you know, just reading small children and memorizing the Quran. They don't know any meaning. What's the point? What's the point? No, this is ibadah in itself. And then part of this tilawah, time is short, part of this tilawah also it's not only recitation, Brothers and sisters, it's not only recitation, rather, rather what? Reciting as Allah taught his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and how he taught his sahaba. This is also very, 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 very important to recite according to the laws and rules of recitation. Especially for non-Arabs, especially for people from the subcontinent, sometimes can be difficult with what we call, what we say, what do we say with? Tajweed. You know what Tajweed means? Tajweed is from the word Jawada Yujawidu in Arabic. Jawada Yujawidu Tajweedan. Fahuwa Mujawid, Fahuwa Mujawad. Means reciting beautifully. As, as taught by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He taught his companions how to recite. It is Honestly, really sad if a Muslim lives 60, 70 years of her or his life. Sometimes when you say her first before the his, yeah? Just to be politically correct. Uh, he, her or his life. 70 years, we've been on eBay, we've been on Amazon, 
We've been on, what else is it? Every, every website you can think of, but we can't recite the words of Allah with tajweed. That is sad. There are 29 letters in the Arabic language. Spend one day perfecting one letter, 29 days you've perfected 29 letters. With ghunna, with ikhfa, with idhar. Clarity. You know the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Allah said to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa in Surah Al-Qiyamah, he said, Inna alayna jam'ahu wa qur'ana Fa'idha qara'nahu Fattabi' qur'ana O Messenger, when we teach you how to recite the book Fa'idha qara'nahu Fattabi' qur'ana Then follow that way of reading So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was taught by Allah Directly through the medium of guidance uh, Through the medium of Jibra'il, peace be upon him Allah taught him this Tilawa of the Quran. فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ فَاتَّبِعْ قُرْآنَ Follow that way of recitation. And he taught his Sahaba. And, and this is why, you know, this Ummah, this only Muslims have this science. This science of Tajweed. You don't have, I don't think, in any other language where you have a science that tells you that Ha, Miftah, Miftah, Ha comes from here and Kha is from here. Za and za and you know ain in English like okay where, where does d come from? You Americans speak so different to the British and you're like yeah, bra bra you know I don't know all the accents are different you know the French people try to speak English like they make the r like there's a hun you know brother zar where are you coming from and I don't know how they speak. It's like everyone has a different accent in Arabic. It's like everybody is supposed to recite in the same way. The ain and the you know ha and the kha. Special science which tells you you take your tongue to the left and take it to the top corner and to bring it at the front and za is here and za and wa and a and ha and kha all the sifat this science of tajweed no parallel in any any language so tilawa with tajweed time is short is the first real important responsibility inshallah everyone make this effort if you've got, already got tajweed alhamdulillah thank Allah Number two, tilawa. We should make this firm resolution. These kind of programs are not there just so that we can just enjoy a bit of company, which is good in itself, but it takes something. And one of the things we should take here, make as soon as we come out of this door from now, make a resolution every single day, even if it's seven minutes or six minutes and 43 seconds, I will recite the book of Allah, whatever happens, no matter what. Every day, six lines, seven lines, three lines. Make it one line. But never, ever let a day pass by that you don't recite the book of Allah. The second objective, quickly, time is very short, is the understanding of the meaning. I'm going to do this short now. Because we said in the verse, Allah said what? Teaching of the book. The second objective was, remember, teaching the meaning. Now, this is an objective. On one hand, we have people who only restrict themselves to tilawa, but never, ever, 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 never think about, especially the non-Arabs, ever think about understanding what Allah is telling us. I remember once I was traveling from London to somewhere in a train, this non-Muslim Christian guy sat next to me and he said to me, one, tell me one thing I don't get. You Muslims, you guys have a book called the Quran, like 90% of you Muslims don't have a clue what your God is telling you. Like, how does that work? We know Bibles in English. We, we know what God is saying. But 90%, they don't have a clue what God is saying. And that's true. Honestly, it's not only the responsibility of the scholars to understand the Quran. It's for everybody. That's why we have translations. And this, I don't know where this has come, especially in the subcontinent culture, where people don't think, no, we're not supposed, oh, no, no, we're not supposed to understand the Quran. No, understand it. يُعَلِّمُهُمْ The meanings. But then on the other hand, understanding doesn't mean that we all become mufassir of the Qur'an and mujtahids of the Qur'an. You know, with, with the Sahaba radiallahu anhum were Arabs. Still the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa taught them. This meaning has also come from Allah. Meaning was given to the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He transmitted that meaning to the companions. And there is established way of understanding not somebody who just looks at dictionary and takes the meaning out. No, you have to follow the traditional system of the meanings and the tafsir of the Qur'an. So, take time out. Alhamdulillah, there's a lot of good...
Quran translations available, reliable, just make sure it's reliable. Translations, explanatory notes, one of the great, and I would say this, probably I'm biased, one of my teachers, Sheikh Mufti Taqi Uthmani, Hafizahullah, he has a really amazing book, The Noble Meanings of the Quran. Pick that up, it's beautiful, two volumes, you can get it one thick volume, There's got, it has explanatory notes. If you're spending six lines every day, read the translation and a bit of explanatory meanings. And then when you recite in Salah, imagine when you understand Surah Al-Fatiha, we recite Surah Al-Fatiha so many times a day, but we don't have, some of us don't know what, have a clue what it means. If you know the meaning, then your Salah is transformed as well. It's like amazing. You'll think, إِهْدِنَا الصَّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صَرَاطَ الَّذِينَ With the meaning, think, reflect on the verses that are being recited. And lastly, acting upon it. The third, and I'm going to end with this in two minutes, the third basic objective of sorry, the third right of the Qur'an over us. Recitation, one, try to understand the meaning, number two. And number three is acting upon the verses. Now, acting upon, many of the verses are to do with, you know, the, the qudra, the power, the might of Allah. Allah says, أَفَلَا يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ etc. You know, take these meanings inside. Try to act upon it. When Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O you who believe. What does Allah say straight after that? So we need to think to ourselves. Allah is talking to me. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. Yes, O Allah. You're talking to me. Tell me. Tell me, Allah. And then stop for a moment. Pause. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. O you who believe. Yes. La yaskhar qawmun min qawmin. A group of people should not make mockery of another group of people. As soon as we read that in the morning, how can I spend a day mocking other people? Allah is telling me. La yaskhar qawmun min qawm. Allah says. La yaghatab ba'dukum ba'da. None of you should backbite, whether you're a male or a female, whether you have a lot of issues, do not talk behind the back of somebody else. Don't pick up the WhatsApp and say, sister, you know, she's like this and he's like this, or brother like this, and, like, and all the tail bearing. You just read in the morning, لا يغتب بعضكم بعضا. Allah is saying haram, backbiting, with certain exceptions only. Find out when it's halal. Allah says, اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن. Oh, you who believe, stay away, abstain from suspicion from having evil suspicions about people give people benefit of the doubt as soon as you see someone this guy is coming past the masjid oh he must have not prayed Allah says and so on and so forth acting upon the verses of the Quran just go directly we don't need no one to tell us Allah is telling us what else better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our Lord and Creator telling us so this is the third very very important objective which is acting upon the spirit of the Quran. Quran. And then, if you want to say, like a, uh, icing on the cake, or the masala, or the achar, or whatever you want to call it, then memorizing. Memorizing is like the icing on the cake. But you got to have the cake. As the Americans say, you got to have the cake. Not just have the icing. Memorizing comes after these three things. Tilawa, understanding, and acting upon the Quran, are three important things on top of which is the memorization. There's reward in memorization as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to attach ourselves with his kalam, with his speech. May Allah grant us the blessings. Don't just use the Quran just for adornment and keep it in the house. That like This Quran looks really amazing. This is my beautiful pink Quran. Yes, it is a very beautiful pink Quran, sister. Pink is for sisters, right? It's a very beautiful Quran, but yes, pick it up. Don't just use it for some, like every time you feel, you know, like some problems in life, oh, now I turn to the Quran. No. Whether you have problems or no problems, Quran is not just for problems. Quran is for daily life. Whether you're enjoying life, whether you're feeling sad, depressed, or happy, whatever state, don't just using, use it for amulets and things like that. So this is what the Quran is for. May Allah grant us the ability to attach ourselves and, uh, to the Quran. And may, us, may he give us the blessings of his words and his speech. I would like to thank once again Miftah Institute for this amazing, amazing program that they've organized today. And I'm sure half of you are traveling down the M1 or something to go to London tomorrow. Oh, no, people down here don't travel, sorry. You have another audience down there. But I think some of you will be going, inshallah. May Allah bless all of you. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.